Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. Can it be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke jet. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen. And the answer is uh, it just Sometimes did. The bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit the little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In game live, prime time. 40 to 1, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In game live, overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. After Atlanta won the draft lottery, that I was taking Risha Shade number one. When he was at plus 425, I said, Reese Shane's going number one. Well, hot damn. Who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft? Zachary Reese Shane. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan, not through any bias, but the amount of money that he's uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today, that home run coming in at plus 230. Max Free here, while he has been strong, this is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions, only on Sports Grid. Apologies for those technical difficulties, but we're back live right here on the early line, and it's hour number two, and we had another man to the death. Mm. You deserve to take a seat after yeah. being up at the Magic Wall here in our two-set show for our 2024 NBA Draft special, all of the opening round long last night. He's the coach, James Young, JY, joining us live in studio for this next hour to look back on everything. We saw from the opening round of the 2024 NBA draft, all 30 picks, what stood out to JY from the coaching perspective, winners and losers, a few draft grades, and of course, a busy day, JY, yesterday around the association as well. When the NBA draft happens, it amps up a little bit of the intensity in terms of those maneuvers being made. But first and foremost, thank you for being here after a long night last night here on the, or on the early line. This is a back-to-back for a coach, so excuse my voice. It's a little hoarse, mm. but uh, I think you're done. I, well, think I, get, I can get through it in yeah. a couple hours. We got you. We got you. I'm ready to go. How about uh, you? I, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Never been better. Let's roll along then, and yeah. let's start at the very top of the opening round from the 2024 NBA draft last night. JY, you were all over it. In the two-week process, even deeper than that, leading up to the NBA draft, the battle of who was going to go first overall to Atlanta between the two French players and Zachary Rizache and Alex Saar. Just two weeks ago, Saar was nearly a $2 favorite to be that top overall pick. Instead, as we saw last night, at its closing number on the FanDuel Sportsbook, Riza Shea closes as a hefty minus 2,000 favorite. What about those two prospects, J.Y.? Ended up with Riza Shea in Atlanta and Saar in Washington. Well, simply put, number one, Alex Saar just didn't want to go to Atlanta. So it's hard, I said it last night as a coach, to try and evaluate someone when you can't get them in the building. So I think that would became something that was a little bit difficult uh, for them. But then I thought just what they need, right? A guy that could be, uh, can get his shot off the move, silky smooth offensive game, long and lanky defender, can slide him into that three and D roll right away at Atlanta, especially with the fact that you're looking at DeAndre Hunter most likely being moved. Now, obviously, there's always concerns, right? His, his, he's got that slight build, Ben, so you're worried about can he finish at the rim where it's far more aggressive there. So he's got some things to work on. Listen, there's no slam dunk in this draft. Everybody knows that. So you got to kind of look at sometimes you go with the need, and the need 
for Atlanta is someone at that three spot because I think because of his contract, DeAndre Hunter is probably going to get moved. Let me ask you this question, though, Coach, because it's, it's one thing that pops up all the time. Like The goal of an agent typically is to place his player in the best spot that they can succeed. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is it's very rare that – like, why would you not want to be in Atlanta, though? And you would want to be in Washington. It's not as if, like, we lucked out and said, okay, the Golden State Warriors are picking number two. What a great franchise. He's got to go there. Like, why the need to say, I just don't want to go to Atlanta? Is there anything well, behind it? I think maybe if you, if you want to, like, peel back and start look for conspiracy theories, maybe the whole thought of, yeah. well, he's French, Alex R, and the last time – uh, that coach had a big Frenchman, was Rudy Gobert, mm-hmm. Quinn Snyder, maybe he doesn't work, yeah. he doesn't value bigs. So, mm. or, or the fact that you just look at Atlanta as being a team that may just be a poorly run franchise. Not saying the Wizards are being run much better, but to me, sometimes this is what happens. We saw it with Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, what they're yeah. doing with Brownies. Sometimes you try and steer guys in certain directions. We'll see if it pays off. I think I think Sar will have a better rookie year because of his ability to impact on a defensive end of the yeah. poor Donnie. But overhaul, long haul, I think Risha Shea, to me, projects to be the better player. Maybe it was Alex Saar doing his homework on NBA draft history and mm. knowing that Atlanta had only made one previous number one overall pick. That was David Thompson, who never played in Atlanta, went mm. to the ABA and then spent his NBA career mainly with the Denver Nuggets. In comparison of those top two selections, Saar is the NBA Rookie of the Year favorite at plus 450. Riza Shea, second best price at 6-1. to one. Nobody in minus money like their fellow French countryman, Victor Wembanyama last year, who was a minus 175 favorite after the opening round of the 2023 NBA draft. So through the rest of the top 10, JY, we focus on the top five. Reed Shepard, third overall of the Rockets, fourth consecutive draft. The Rockets have a top four pick. Stephon Castle makes his way to San Antonio to pair up with Victor Wembanyama. And then Ron Holland. Donnie's right side's guy Mm -hmm. goes fifth overall to the Detroit Pistons. Of those three picks to round out the top five, what stands out to you the most? Ron Holland. I mean, Ron Ron Holland was the one that he has such an intriguing upside, right, as an athlete, as a defender, as a finisher. But it was kind of the one where, like, wait, what? Because if you look at it, the first four picks kind of went chalk, right? We, we, We kind of looked at everybody going to where they were supposed to go. And that's where the draft went completely off the rails at pick number five. If you're a team like Detroit, you got to make some changes here. Now, obviously, you can play Holland at six foot eight. Now, what happens with Thompson? Do you try to play him and Thompson together? Thompson can't shoot that ball well. Maybe Isaac Stewart gets moved off uh, the team. Jalen Duren. So, another intriguing young player for the Detroit Pistons. Let's take a look a little bit down that draft board here and sort of round out that top ten. Taking a look here at the seventh overall pick, which is Donovan Klingon. Now, granted, this is what we talk about, how intriguing this draft was. You knew one and two who that was going to be, but obviously Donovan Klingon, I thought probably would be a top five pick, maybe even go number three overall or possibly number two. The reason for the slide, it's maybe not even fair to call it a slide here, but winding up with Portland. Did we see that coming? Well, we knew that Portland was interested in a big because there was talk about, and Ben and I talked about a lot, that maybe – Zach Eady was going to be the guy if Donovan mm-hmm. Klingon went. Yeah. So what ends up happening, folks, is you, you start to draft this draft based off of what you need, right? You looked at a team like Houston at three. They figured, okay, we need to get a scoring guard like a Reed Shepard. It makes sense. Obviously, Stephon Castle, check the box. That's what they need, you know, lead guard in San Antonio. Holland, we already talked about a little bit. And then at six, T. John Shalom, it's probably the one that was the other curveball mm-hmm. there. I thought he was going top ten. Just didn't think he was going number six to Charlotte, but it makes sense with them trading P.J. Washington during the season. So now here's Portland, who was thinking, well, we don't know. We may have to take Edie at 14 or trade up, and then here comes Klingon, and they fall right into your lap. It's a great situation for Klingon. It's a good situation for Portland because they have those perimeter guards that are young that really can't defend. So now you have your rim protector protecting the basket for them, now, denominating, denominating, leaving, because he's probably going somewhere else. Rob, Rob Williams can't stay healthy. Intriguing piece, but I like it with Don McClingan going to Portland. The year of yeah. the big man in men's college basketball, the year of the big man in the top 10, Donovan Klingon, seventh overall to the Portland Trailblazers, Zach Eady, a top 10 pick. 
plus 500 before the draft got underway last night. He goes ninth overall to Memphis. Let's round out the rest of the lottery, J.Y. Modest Bruzelis on a slight slide as well. Goes 11th overall to his hometown team, the Chicago Bulls. Nikola Topic, 12th overall to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Devin Carter, 13th overall. Had a minus money price to be a top 10 pick. Ends up in California's capital in Sacramento. And Bub Carrington out of Pittsburgh, 14th overall to the Wizards, who had a trade earlier in the day. Denny Avida makes his way to the Rose City. The Blazers send back Malcolm Brogdon and the 14th overall pick last night. What was your thoughts on the rest of how the lottery shaped out? Topic is such an intriguing name because if he doesn't have that ACL injury, I think he's probably the number four pick. I think you could argue that he could have went mm. to San Antonio at yeah. four. So he slid and he goes to a situation where they just got playmakers abound in Oklahoma City. And this kid, who I think is the best pure passing point guard in the draft, now goes to a situation where he could play, you could put SGA off the ball and make him a two. He's a big guard at about six foot six. So I like Topic. Listen, Bazellus makes sense because the Rosen's probably gone. Devin Carter, he slides. Interesting with the Aaron Fox there. Bob Carrington, guy's a bucket. Really, teams did a pretty good job, even though it got a little crazy after pick four. And some college basketball players and names to know. Kalel Ware out of Indiana goes to South Florida, joins the Miami Heat at 15th overall. Jared McCain, the sharpshooter from Duke, 16th overall to Philly. Even in his dreams last night, Donnie Wrightside mm. was hoping that Dalton Connect would make bucket. his way to the city of brotherly love. Instead, he's out to the city of Angels in Los Angeles. Coaches, draft winners, and losers. My draft winners and losers. Did you not set your graphic in? I don't know. Oh, I'll sit this one draft out. recap of the next player, maybe. the early line. <laughs> Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. It can be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. What? I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke day. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing that you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen. And the answer is, uh, it just Sometimes did. The bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, if the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit yeah. the little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In-game live. Prime time. 40 to 1, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In-game live. Overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. After Atlanta won the draft lottery, that I was taking Risha Shade number one. When he was at plus 425, I said Risha Shade's going number one. Well, hot damn. Who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft? Zachary Risha Shade. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max free here while he has been strong. This is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Our opening round recap from the 2024 NBA Draft continues in this second hour, live right here on this Thursday morning on the early line. Donnie Wright's side, J.Y. James Young, and myself, Ben Stevens. Time for the coach scouting report going back over the draft from last night. And some winners 
and losers from the first 30 picks in night number one of the NBA draft. J.Y., let's start with the positive. Let's start with the optimism. The selections that were made, the teams that made the moves to help the future of their franchise. Your number one winner, who was it last night in the NBA draft? This is not the Kevin Walsh show, but I'm going to say the Lakers. Just just Mm. the simple fact that Dalton Connect, when you look at a team like the Lakers, simply put, the way they play, right, what do they need? They need guys that can knock down shots. They, they, They don't have shooters. So if you have a guy like LeBron James that wants to punch the gap and drive, if you have Anthony Davis that wants to drive or sit at the dunk spot, yeah. you have to have guys around the perimeter who are capable three-point shooters. And the best shooter, arguably, fell to you at 17. A guy that I had rated as the seventh best player on my big board, someone that could shoot straight up threes, you can run him off the he can come off the bounce. You can run him off screens. You can put baby in the corner. It don't matter. Rugged defender. You play for uh, Rick Barnes. You better play defense. So this is a team that is kind of in a, I don't want to call it a transition. They're trying to win now and win in the future. So they needed a ready-made guy that can step in right now, play 25 to 30 minutes a night. They got that and don't connect. Yeah, from a business perspective, I actually really like, Coach, what the Lakers did because there was so much thought process, like they're going to burn that 17th overall pick and get Bronny James. It's like, well, what are you doing? Get the quality player and get him later. But if I then say a winner for myself, might be the NBA itself. First time it's going to be on two nights. What would we be watching for on night number two? Like, you got the marquee name, basically, in this draft that's going to go probably in day number two, and you have a day number two. But I think Ben and I can agree on one of his favorite winners last night. You take a look at a team that made the Western Conference Finals mm-hmm. and added to that roster, Ben, I'll let you take it from here. The Minnesota Timberwolves, yeah. DRS, and yes. I know J.Y. feels pretty mm-hmm. similarly. Listen, in terms of a roster and fit perspective, I'll let J.Y. handle how the offensive structure is going to look in Minneapolis if Rob Dillingham and or Terrence Shannon Jr are really going to make an immediate impact for this Timberwolves team. But you reach the Western Conference Finals. You upend the reigning champs, the Denver Nuggets, in round number two in seven games in their home Mm. arena, and then you were booked as a favorite. Sure, you did not win that Western Conference crown, and you lost in a gentleman's sweep against the Dallas Mavericks. But besides that, you almost get to the precipice, and you make two moves despite only having one pick to make your team, in my opinion, substantially better. Rob Dillingham, who was drafted eighth overall by San Antonio and quickly shipped to the Twin Cities and 27th overall, Terrence Shannon Jr., who, J.Y., I'm incredibly high on. I believe he is a pure bucket getter Mm -hmm. to the nth degree and will bring that offensive skill set into the NBA. And Rob Dillingham, who might be the best scoring guard in the entirety of this draft, to pair with Anthony Edwards, and Carl Anthony Towns, I think it's an optimistic picture in Minneapolis. <laughs> you got arguably the two best one-on-one guards yeah. in the same draft, w- which is amazing. I mean, I-, I thought that when I saw R- Rob Dillingham go to San Antonio, I was like, ooh, him, him and Castle? Oh, okay. And then the trade happens. I'm like, wait, 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 wait what? You're sending him to Minnesota. So now you have a team that can start Mike Conley, Anthony Edwards, obviously McDaniels, uh, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns. And now you're Bench, who has a reigning sixth man of the year in Nas Reed, and you got two kids that can go get buckets, but also are really good defenders, especially Terrence Shannon Jr. in the back, in the backcourt, in the front court, off ball, on ball. You got guys that now your second group has now become elevated. And think about this when you want to go on a run and you want to go offense, offense, offense. And you go, you could go Rob Dillingham with, obviously, Anthony Edwards and Terrence Shannon Jr. Yeah. and go a three-guard lineup. And if you want to go quick, then you obviously you could put McDaniels at the four, go Nasri at the five. Good luck trying to stop this team, one of the best defensive teams in the NBA, just completely turbocharged their offense. The Timberwolves, that second best price to win the Western Conference, plus 450, less than a buck behind the Denver Nuggets. They will be right back there. And JY, when we sat on this test, Mm -hmm. getting ready for the national championship game in the men's NCAA tournament about two and a half months ago, I said to you, you might question if the basketball you see tonight is 1984 or 2024 because of UConn's Donovan Klingon and the big man battle against Purdue's Zach Eady. Both of those big guys go in the top 10 last night, and I know you want to focus on Portland. Why did you like the pick so much for the Blazers at 7th overall? It just simply put, Ben, it's just the ability to put a rim protector to take care of where you have 
deficiencies. When you look at Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, Scoot Henderson, they're not strong defenders. If you look at Chauncey Billups, he made his name in Detroit. Where did they do? They play defense. They had Ben Wallace. Now, I'm not, he's not Ben Wallace, but he is a rim protector and someone that can clean up mistakes that I think is really important for Portland. I'm interesting to see what they do with Jeremy Grant with that terrible contract. I'm sure at some point they'll try to get rid of it, uh, but I think it's a good move. But really quick, I know I had three winners. I, I got to bring this up. Memphis is so damn smart. They sat there and they got Zach Eaton. And if you look at that team in Memphis, they were at their best when Steven Adams was healthy to protect Jaron Jackson Jr. Now you got a souped-up version of Steven Adams. Bigger, uh, can better post-game, better at the dunk spot. Maybe, and here's the thing. If Jonas Valanciunas can defend screens, why can't Zach Eady play drop coverage? Let him go to work. Memphis, if they get their act together, this was a team a couple of years ago. We were thinking it was a team in the future. They're on the come up, Ben. And DRS, we saw a lot of plus yep. money last night. Zach Eady plus 500 yep. to be a top 10 pick. Donovan Klingon did close as the favorite to go 7th overall to Portland, plus 340, that number. Yeah, no, and I'm surprised there. I, th- I thought he would go a little bit sooner, but also going out there to Portland with a chance to run up and down the court in the Western Conference. I'm looking forward to it because it's the one guy, and I talk about Zach Eady already. Yeah. You know what you're getting when you plug and play. Like, Donovan Kling is not going to show up. Like, oh, man, I didn't know you were that athletic. Like, you know what you're getting out of Donovan Kling, and he should be a good player from here on out. And he certainly is athletic. He's an elite yeah. rim protector. Yep. I think the offensive skill set for both of those guys – extended in the perimeter their shooting yep. ability is only going to continue to develop within the association so now from the overly optimistic Uh-oh. to maybe the not so good mm. it's been a great 48 hours overall for the new york knicks but i think we'll all have some things to say on that. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. Can it be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. What? I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke day. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing that you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding in game live all access wondering when that was going to happen and the answer is uh it just did the bigger guy will have the advantage well the little guy can move joe it's hard to hit the little guy sometimes when you're a big boy right in game live prime time 40 to 1 i'm gonna take a little flyer on justin rose in game live overtime as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet it's smarter to be on sports grid after atlanta won the draft lottery that i was taking risha shade number one when he was at plus 425 i said risha shade's going number one well hot damn who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft Zachary Richeche. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's. Uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max Freed here, while he has been strong, this is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
So we started with the good and maybe now the not so good or dare I say bad. Some mm. of the draft losers from the opening round of the 2024 NBA draft live right here on this Thursday morning on the early line. JY, this is your show from a coaching perspective. Who do you think had a rough opening round? Oof. Simply put, Charlotte. I, I love T. John Salam. I think he's going to project very well, but I think it was a reach to get him at six. Simply put, you had Memphis, who we think was trying to get up to six, whether the reports are right or not. You would think someone was going to try to get into that spot to try and jump Portland to get Donovan Klingon. So my point is, is if you wanted to make a trade and move yourself down a couple of spots, you could do so and it would be no problem. So why didn't they move down uh, to nine and make a trade? and get more draft assets, and still get a guy at Salam that I think they could have gotten there. So to me, sometimes it's a move you don't make that don't make sense. To me, Charlotte, I was knocking them when they had Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan left, and they're still making the same mistakes. Big mistake there with Charlotte, not moving down. Michael Jordan, the mm. executive, by the yeah, way, yeah, not yeah, the basketball yeah. player. Not the basketball player. Ah, yeah, 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 sure yeah, yeah. Come on now. All right, let's get, let's get into some more losers here. Now, me checking in as the Philadelphia 76ers representative on this panel here. Yeah, really a lot of uproar go. last night because you can see it coming, particularly, let's go back a couple years with the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh, we need a wide receiver. Oh, Justin Jefferson's on the board. Jalen Rieger was the pick here. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad pick here coming in for the NBA, but Dalton Connect was there on the board for the Philadelphia 76ers, who was a bucket right away, a guy that can be not a 6'2 guard, but a 6'5 player that can get buckets. They didn't draft him. That's one of my losers just from a draft perspective, but... I know we're going to have a little bit of discourse right now because Ben's got his number one loser on the board, Ben. Who is that from yesterday? Listen, J.Y., I think we need to temper some expectations in the big apple oh, around oh, 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 yeah. Here we go. Listen, if yeah. you don't want to make a, tri- yeah. a pick, just trade all of them or take somebody and stash them and try to oh, get some boy. draft assets out of them. Pacom Dottier <laughs> at 25th overall after trading back and then trading away what was going to be your second pick of the opening round. If you didn't want to make the move, try to make another maneuver. You've had a great day of trades mm-hmm. and acquisitions. Package those two first round picks with some talent still on the board of the opening round and get the heck out. Don't just draft a French guy because you saw Zachary Riza, Shea, Alex Starr, <laughs> and Tijon Salon go in the top six. I don't know what Leon Rose and the Knickerbocker organization was doing yesterday, J.Y., and I know you were not too pleased with the decision either. You know what it's like? Uh Uh-oh. It's like getting that, that you you go to the deli, right? Yep. You get the the nice meat. You got Mm -hmm. the condiments. And here comes the French stale baguette. Yeah. No, it's that Uh, that stale baguette. Yeah. What in the Frederick Weiss and the Frank Nilakina are we (laughs) doing? I mean, it was was so great being a a Nick fan for 48 hours. It's kind of like being a Jeff fan when you get Aaron Rodgers. And you're like, yes, promised land. Wait, what are we doing now? Aldo Balkman. What's his name again? Daddy? It doesn't matter. He won't be with the Knicks ever. He's going to probably stay in France (laughs) for the rest of his career. It's going to be like when we pass on Ron Artest to take, you know, Frederick Weiss, oh. who last time we mm. saw him got dunked on. I don't think he's been seen <laughs> since. So the Knicks, yes. But I'll say this. I want to push back a little bit. A little bit. Okay. His team, Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. You got Tyrese Maxey. Oh, mm-hmm. love Maxey. Yep. You got Joel Embiid. Yep. You got Dalton Connect. Here we go. Here's your shooter. Space the floor. Boom, boom, boom. Jacoby Walter. Create his own shot. We go with Jared McCain? Like an undersized guard when the two point guard system doesn't work. TikTok not, matters. Coach. I mean, what is there? I mean, matters. is that Jared McCain or Good. is that Seth Curry? Well, either way, you know, that's <laughs> where they're hoping for. Well, it ain't going to be Steph. That's for damn sure. So to me, Philadelphia, who needed a, a two, particularly that could shoot the ball and had Dalton Connect literally right there in their grasp, went with Jared McCain. It's almost like I don't think they were prepared for that moment that Connect was going to be there. Tough I mean, scene. I mean, look, just to be a little bit fair here to Jared McCain, did shoot better than 41% from three last year at his only year in Durham with the Blue Devils. Mm. I understand Dalton Connect is a great shooter and a pure scorer. I don't think it was the worst pick ever. It's kind of fun to joke about with DRS, yeah. knowing what the Eagles did in the 2024 <laughs> NFL draft and what they could have had in the 2024 NBA draft, but still don't mind the move for Philadelphia. Dalton Connect being there does make it a little bit more peculiar. We'll have plenty more around the association with JY in this next half hour 
now will highlight the good the oh. New York Knicks yeah. had to do. Oh, yeah. And There's some listen, good. it's <laughs> still another day of the NBA draft for the first time since 1989 when the draft became only two rounds. We have a second day in round number two. The best available prospects still on the board. I still have got them. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. Can going to be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. What? I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke day. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing that you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen. And the answer is, uh, it just the, did. The bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, if the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit yeah. the little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In-game live. Prime time. 40 to 1, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In-game live. Overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. After Atlanta won the draft lottery, the Iowa State Risha Shade number one. When he was at plus 425, I said Risha Shade's going number one. Well, hot damn. Who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft? Zachary Risha Shade. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max free here while he has been strong. This is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Live right here on this Thursday on the early line. The NBA draft, the start of the offseason, but the summer already underway in the association. Some big signings and extensions that we have seen in the last 24 hours. So I was critical, and I think you were as well, of the Knicks draft last night, moving moving things around to only make one selection, and it to be, to be Pacom Dottier at 25th overall. But prior to that, it was only exciting things inside Madison Square Garden. The trade for Mikhail Bridges the night prior, and of course yesterday, the re-signing of OG and Anobi. Five-year deal, $212.5 million, JY. In terms of the structure, in bringing Ananobi back, were you surprised the Knicks were able to ink this deal so quickly? No, because Ananobi's agent is Leon Rose's son. Okay. So I'm sure they had this thing oh, lined up no already. Tampering, no tampering, No, 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 no tampering. No tampering. That's more Josh Hart with the whole hey, wait, 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 wait. Well, Stop implicating. But <laughs> when, you, when you talk about it, folks, when you line this Nick team up, it's very simply put, they looked at Boston and said, okay, and you have to be careful when you do this. If we're going to go to the NBA Finals, we got to go through Boston. What do we need? We need elite wing defenders. And you could argue that OG Ananobi and Mikel Bridges, for their size, are two of the very best in the NBA. They could guard multiple positions. I've seen Bridges guard anywhere one through four. I've seen OG guard anything one through five. So it, it, it makes sense. The Knicks did not want to play around with this. They wrapped it up right away. Now, OG could have waited and probably got another, I would say, thir- I think $30 million more over the life of the contract. But he decided this is where he wanted to go. It was still around the same money he would have gotten. He would have only gotten four years, and I think about 41, 42 million if he got to the open market. So he still got around the same annual value, just another year. Win for OG, 
win for the Knicks. I'm, and again, coming from yesterday, we're trying to say, like, is there going to be an odd man out on the Knicks? It's good to see the Knicks pushing their chips into the middle of the table and say, now is the time. And also, from a betting market perspective, Coach, the Boston Celtics here in the Eastern Conference, that's a plus 135 price to win it. Obviously, we can agree they're the best team overall. But number two now, that's the New York Knicks at a plus 350 price, followed by the Milwaukee Bucks plus 550 and the Sixers at a plus 750 here. Talk to us about that Eastern Conference odds and the legitimacy now of the New York Knicks maybe to make a run into the NBA Finals. Well, it's still not done, Donnie. I mean, part of the reason why the Knicks did what they did in the draft is they tried to save, save $3 million because they're trying to find some kind of pathway to get Isaiah Hartenstein back, maximum of a four-year $72 million deal. But right now, they can't even offer him that because they need to shed a little bit of salary. Yeah. So that still make the trades get out of the first round completely, kind of like what they did with Oklahoma City getting the five future second-round picks. But when you look at the East, yes, the Knicks are there. They are the second-best team. It is the culture. It's the Villanova way. It's the Tibbs way. Yeah. It makes sense that they're second. But I still need to see what happens with Hartenstein. Is it Mitchell Robson gets moved? There's still the ultimate wild card that the, the Knicks fans don't want to bring up is when are we moving Julius Randle? Right. And I think that is going to be something that's going to come up all the way through because I do think the best lineup the New York Knicks could have if they're keeping everyone but Julius Randle is OG at the four, Bridges at the three, Brunson at the one. You can bring DV Touch off the bench to get a better two guard and then your center. So I still think there's another move. And really quick, listen, we know that Milwaukee's trying to make moves. There's rumors that they're trying to get Andrew Wiggins for Bobby Portis and some parts. They got to get younger. They got to get yeah. better defensively. Uh, Philadelphia, we'll see what they do. Yeah. Is it going to be Paul George? Do they trade for Brandon Ingram? They got to get a better forward or a second, a, a number three score. And then Miami's lying in the weeds. Like, what are they doing? Jimmy doesn't want to sign the extension. Yeah. What is he going to do? Knicks right now, second best team on paper. But it can change the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So let me ask you that question because there are still questions to be answered mm -hmm. for this New York Knicks organization, namely Julius Randle and Isaiah Hartenstein. There are also things to be figured out the rest of this summer and offseason for those two teams directly behind them. The Bucks entered last year a co-favorite to win the NBA championship with the Boston Celtics. It was a tumultuous season inside the Pfizer Forum. We expect Philadelphia to go out and address who would be that number three option outside of Tyrese Maxey and, of course, Joel Embiid. So I expect those Eastern Conference odds to shift drastically by the time we open up in October, the 2024-25 NBA season. But as of this moment, Boston Celtics are still clearly ahead of everybody, but only just over $2 now separates the Seas and the Knicks. As of this moment, with the acquisition of Mikael Bridges, with the re-signing of OG and Anobi, and still the questions left to answer, are the Knicks Boston's best test in the Eastern Conference? Yes, because they can line up two top defenders and Bridges and Anobi, and you can match up with Brown and Tatum. And I think that is the important thing. If you kind of find a way to get Hardenstein back or Mitchell Robinson, you have a big that can that can go and they can bother Porzingis inside and get rebounds. You have a fantastic closer in Brunson who kind of got the better of Drew Holiday at times last year. But to me, yes, they are the biggest challenge because of their defense. And if they could keep everyone, they actually could be one of the deepest teams in the NBA, even though Tom Thibodeau still plays, still plays the starters. 45 minutes a night. Let's take a look at another extension that happened yesterday. Bam Adebayo got a big deal from Miami, and certainly I don't think anybody was out there saying, like, boy, that was a surprise, a well-deserving contract. But one of those teams that we always expect to compete in the East, Coach, they now sit at a 17-to-1 price. Are we expecting moves on the horizon for the Miami Heat? Because they typically, movers and shakers. Yes, and they're the team that kind of walks in silence, right? But here's the thing, and, and we talked about it last night, you know, Ben, Kevin, and I. The wear pickup is like, Yep, here we go. Guy, a questionable motor, right. questionable yeah. work ethic, yeah. goes into the heat culture. They may bring Udonis Haslam out of mm -hmm. retirement for about <laughs> a couple, just for training camp, just to kick the snot out of yeah. this kid yeah. and get him to play. But if they can hit on where, right? And then obviously you can move Bam to the four. Jimmy, <laughs> he's going to have to play some games in a regular season if he wants to start to get the money yeah. that he wants to get. So this is kind of like a carrot out there. And you can't ever deny the greatness of an Eric Spolster. They're lying in the weeds, and they're going to be making a run. I think Orlando could take a step back. I think they were upset, as you know what, that they couldn't get Dalton connected in the draft because they shoot the ball terribly from three. And then here's the crazy thing. 
the team that made the Eastern Conference Finals, we're not even talking about them. A team in Indiana sure. that could be, you know, disrespected at 20, was that 25 to 1, mm-hmm. to come out of the East. They, if they are healthy and they find a way to, to you know, clean up their defense, yeah. there's one thing for sure. No team can get up and down the floor with them. I think it's really interesting, though, to your point about the New York Knicks, to what Milwaukee is going to undertake this offseason. Everybody in the East, you still have to get past Boston, and a lot can change, but you got to surpass the Celtics as of this moment. It's an interesting offseason for Miami. The pick of Khalil Ware, uh, Khalil Ware at 15th overall, have to love that. Jaime Hawkes, an all first team NBA rookie last year, but they are going to keep Bam at a bio in house through 2029. We'll see about Jimmy Butler's future mm-hmm. in South Florida. Nick Claxton also signing an extension yesterday with the Brooklyn Nets, a four year deal worth $100 million. The Nets have made plenty of moves in the last 48 hours as well, but they've been trading some things away. They've been getting back some draft assets, maybe keeping an eye on the future. This upcoming season, there are seven teams, seven in the NBA, all tied for the longest price to win an NBA championship next year, including Brooklyn at 1,000 to one. Mm. What are the Nets going to look like this upcoming year, and are they already keeping an eye on this time next year in the 2025 NBA draft? Tank for Cooper. Mm. Simply put, take Cam Johnson, take him to somewhere like Cleveland who can use a stretch forward and can shoot the ball, get rid of him. Dennis Schroeder, get rid of him. Ben Simmons, you play 10 minutes of the game, you're going to. Just trade everyone away. Let Cam Thomas score 40 points a game on 95 Mm -hmm. shots. It's okay. And tank. Embrace the tank, because I'm telling you this, that next year's draft, with Cooper Flag, with Ace Bailey, with Dylan Harper, it ain't the 2024 draft. There is star power coming. Might have coming. to be on that telecast. I mean, you might have, might have to. to be there. I think that's your moment. The yep. 2025 NBA draft special live on to Sports Grid. Yep. Hosted side by, by side. Donnie yes. Rice yeah. Absolutely. His big yes. board? Now that would be yep. electric. But the 2024 <laughs> NBA draft is not done. A preview of night two up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. Can it be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. What? I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke jay. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing you always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen, and the answer is uh, it just Some did. The bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, if the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit the yeah. little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In-game live, prime time. 40 to 1, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In-game live, overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. After Atlanta won the draft lottery, I was thinking we should shade number one. When he was at plus 425, I said Richard Shade's going number one. Well, hot damn. Who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft? Zachary Richichet. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's. Uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max Freed here, while he has been strong, this is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
Back in 1989, the NBA draft condensed to only two rounds. And since that point, through 2023, it was only one night. So tonight is historic. It is a two-night NBA draft with round number two on the horizon this Thursday evening. Only 28 picks slotted in this second round as two teams have forfeited their second round selection this year. 30 last night, 28 more to go. And, of course, we start with the elephant in the room and the main talking point, J.Y., for this second round of the 2024 NBA draft. That is Bronny James. A few times last night during our Sports Grid draft special, we put the viewers on Bronny Watch when the Lakers were drafting at 17th overall and briefly when the Phoenix Suns held on to that number 22 overall pick. There are not updated odds at the moment ahead of this second round on the FanDuel Sportsbook, but yesterday, Bronny James' prop over under 54 and a half in the over had the heavy juice. Mm. The Lakers are set to pick 55th. The Suns are set to pick 56th. When and where do we see Bronny James go in night number two? Mm. It's going to be 55, but I want I want him to sweat it out. I want him to sweat it out. <laughs> I, I want someone to come up there. And remember, folks, Phoenix has 56, and they also got some other draft pick compensation, so they could easily go and jump. And you've seen second-round picks get moved at a warp speed. And then there's also the Knicks, I think, are sitting at 51. Do they sit there and try and push the card? So it's going to be 55, but for, like, the pure cinema of it, yeah. Donnie, yeah. I want someone to make a trade and make the Lakers sweat it out and make them trade again just to get Bronny. Let, let me double down on this, too, with Bronny James, because it's such a really interesting tactic to move where Rich Paul's basically saying, like, I'm going to guide this guy. And great, great. That's what agents are supposed to do, put him in the best spot possible. But tell me this, Coach. Is there any other teams out there that are viable for Bronny? Or do you think Rich Paul put that word out? He's going to the Lakers. Don't waste your draft pick. They're going to get him at 55. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very simply put. And I kind of talked about it as, as a coach when I used to recruit. The hardest thing someone would do is say, well, you know, I want you to recruit my kid. Let me see him play. Well, no. You know, I'm not going to. I, yeah. I, I, wait, what? Take my word for it. Yeah, just take, take my word for it. He's, she's really, really good. Yeah. I tried it once. Didn't work out for you, for me. Part of the reason why I'm probably sitting at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so, my simply put, you set it up where Bronny doesn't work out. So, you got a guy who came off a heart ailment, who had a terrible freshman year, right? Couldn't shoot the ball well, hasn't shown he could shoot the ball well, right? And then you get him at draft, at NBA Dream pre draft camp. But you want to get a guy in your building. You want to get a guy mm-hmm. to work him out, kind of see him with your own eyes, run him through your drills. Give him competition against guys that you think are slotted around him so you can kind of do a comparison. And Rich Paul shut the whole thing down. So now if you're a team, you're grasping at straws. But I still would just like to see someone take a chance and kind of force LeBron's hand. No, 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 no. I don't have to play with Bronny. Yeah. You've been saying this for three years. You lined your contract up so you could opt out the same year that he comes out. Listen, someone please, for the Kevin Walsh in me, mm. make the Lakers sweat this out. Because I'm going to be with Kevin Walsh when this goes down, mm-hmm. and it will be absolutely thrilling to watch him sweat. Round number two of the 2024 NBA draft starts at 4 p.m. Eastern time. JY will be here with OK Dubs, Kevin Walsh, Scotty Farrell, and Mike Carver also in the mix. And just to that point, because of all the conversation around Bronny James, it would cause a little bit of chaos if he were to go somewhere else, not name the Los Angeles Lakers, again, no updated odds at this moment. We hope to maybe have some refreshed numbers by the time the second round starts later this afternoon. The draft position prop for Bronny James yesterday at close, 54 and a half. The over had the juice at minus 158, which lines up conveniently with the Lakers drafting 55th and the Suns drafting 56th. The Lakers were the favorites at minus 165 to draft Bronny James. The Suns had the second best number at plus 750. But it's not just Bronny James, still a ton of talent available, JY, here in a round number two, including potentially the largest slide of night number one. Kyle Filipowski, expected to go late in the opening round out of Duke, is still available entering night number two. Is he the best prospect still left on the board? He is, and I think I'm looking right at uh, the first pick of the second round for Flip, 
and the Toronto Raptors. If you look at someone like, I, I kind of compare him to a current Raptor and Kelly Olynyk, uh, someone that's not a bruising big, but a very smart, cerebral player, as long as he keeps his feet to himself. Can step out and shoot the three. Willing passer. Competes defensively. Not a strong defender, but he's not going to just give up the farm. He's going to give you effort. So I'm looking at someone like him early on in the second round. Where does he go? You look at a guy like Johnny Furphy who can shoot the ball. Hello, Milwaukee. Here's your chance. Here's a shooter. You can plug and play right there. You can probably play as a two guard. You got to look at a guy like Tyler Kolick. Tyler Kolick, to me, is a winner. He's a point guard. He is a, a a TJ, I don't know what you call him, a TJ McConnell? Like, a guy that's going to ruffle your feathers, but a guy that you want in your locker room because he's going to give it everything you have. He's in, intriguing. Uh, Adam Bona as a center, uh, as someone that's rugged, can defend, and can step in and give you 15 to 20 minutes a night. This is where teams that are really good, they hit their home runs mm-hmm. here. In the second round, but either accumulating more picks, you may see teams do that and punt the 25, like what the Knicks did with a much better draft. But there are still guys been on the board now that are going to help out teams. If we do take a look at some of those players on the board, and again, like this isn't a great draft overall for superstar talent left and right that we've heard in the news. Is there a guy in the second round that you're looking forward to getting drafted that maybe on the draft board somebody like myself might not know about? I like Pell Larson out of out of Arizona. Mm. I think he's an intriguing player that can do a lot of things. To me, when you when you get to this point of the draft, you want versatility, right? Yeah. Guys that can play multiple positions. Uh, the, the kid Clipman out, out of uh, out of Sweden, like he's another guy yeah. can play multiple positions. Uh, a guy that's intriguing to me also that I thought was going to sneak in late in the first round, Tyler Smith. This guy is rugged. He could defend. He could score a little bit. Interesting prospect. There are guys there that can help you win a championship. Since 1989, again, when the NBA draft condensed to only two rounds, we have seen 21 players selected in round number two make an NBA All-Star team. It's not a lot, but you can still make an impact on night number two. A quadruple header of WNBA action on this Thursday. Next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. Can it be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation? I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke jay. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen, and the answer is, uh, it just Sometimes did. The bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, if the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit the yeah. little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In-game live, prime time. 40 to 1, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In-game live, overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. After Atlanta won the draft lottery, that I was taking Risha Shade number one. When he was at plus 425, I said Risha Shade's going number one. Well, hot damn. Who's the big minus money favorite to go number one in the draft? Zachary Richeche. Hopefully, you had jumped on this earlier enough because the trains left the station. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's. Uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max Free here, but while he has been strong, this is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
A quadruple header of WNBA action on this Thursday. It's been a quiet week in the W. No games Monday. Commissioner's Cup final on Tuesday out on Long Island. Congrats once again to the Minnesota Lynx for knocking off the New York Liberty by 5, 94-89 outright as a five and a half point underdog no games yesterday so we're back in action with a set of four on this thursday speaking of those links their sixth consecutive victory entering mm. the commissioner's cup final against the new york liberty now make that seven straight wins the cup final though does not affect your regular season record like the other commissioner's cup games did leading into that championship contest but already a trophy for the Lynx in one of three teams around the WNBA JY with 13 or more wins alongside Connecticut and the New York Liberty the best record in the W at 15 and 3 but it's an early start today in Dallas 1 p.m. Eastern time for Minnesota they're a nine and a half point favorite on the road against the Wings who have the worst record in the league at 3 and 13 is it a sleepy spot for the Lynx I, I would think so but I think when you look at a coach like Cheryl Reeve, who's one of the best coaches in the WNBA, they're going to be focused. This team was undervalued tremendously for the start of the season. So I do think they're going to cover this spread because if you look at the other side of the Dallas Wings, Coach Latricia Tramble's team has struggled mightily. Satu Sabali, who's most improved player, about a 20-point-a-game score last year, hasn't played all year. They traded Marina Mabry, Arika Awumbuali's best friend and backcourt mate from Notre Dame and the Dallas Wings. They sent her to Chicago, and it's part of a full rebuild. Hello, what are you looking at? Yeah, her name is Paige Beckers next year. Mm -hmm. But so when you look at a team like Dallas, they're going to struggle. Minnesota, their defense always travels. I think if you look at it, you take Minnesota minus the points. I would go look at Arika Awumbuali to go over with no Maddie Segris as well. She's going to get her have to get her shots off. And don't sleep on Kayla McBride. She's really a sniper. And, in fact, Dallas does not play strong defense, particularly on the perimeter. You want to take a look at parity in the WNBA. You're probably not going to get that today. Four games here. You take a look at 9.5, 10.5, 11.5, 8.5 as those spreads. Another one up here, Connecticut Sun and the Washington Mystics. Overnight, that line at the FanDuel Sportsbook, Coach, was 8.5. We now see 10.5 and other outlets up to 11 here. Sun Mystics for us today. Sun Mystics, oh boy, Mystics are bad. Mm. They're mm. bad. They're bad. And then you, you got you. And here's the thing, folks: the Connecticut Sun are the, are the most intriguing team to me right now in the WNBA because they have a great record, but their schedule has been awful. Yeah. Anytime they've played a good team, Vegas Aces on the road, mm -hmm. taken out. Seattle Storm on the road, taken out. New York Liberty at mm. home, taken out. But everyone else, they beat the snot out of mm. because of that defense and the fact that they play. The slowest pace in the WNBA, but also have the highest defensive efficiency. So if you don't want to go with taking the points, or, or I would say this, take the Washington team total under. Yeah. Because they're going to lock you down, and they do a good job of playing half-court basketball. And let's be honest, Washington already struggles to score anyway. Line them up versus a great defensive team and a slow pace. Seems like Mystic's under to me. Mm -hmm. I love handicapping the Connecticut Sun because the total is 152.5. That's a college basketball yep. number, not what you see in the W. However, for the Sticks, of course, they got off to a winless start 0-12. They've won two straight. They've won four of their previous five better basketball in the nation's capital. What a duel it was again on Sunday between Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever, Angel Reese, and the Chicago Sky. The Sky back at home in the Windy City tonight, hosting the Las Vegas Aces, who have won two straight. The point god, Chelsea Gray, is back. And the Aces, Jay Wine, 11-point favorite tonight in Chicago. What's your play? My play is this. Ready for this? Mm -mm. Rebounding under for Angel Reese. I know she's been on ah. a a double-double run here. But she's going against the Las Vegas Aces, a team that's going to want to make a statement. Yeah. They're playing much better than Chelsea Gray's back. She's got a couple of practices a days under her system. So, they're, they're, listen, FanDuel's got this prop out right now with Angel Reese specials for her double-double streak. Folks, I'm not touching it because I don't think she gets one tonight. Angel Reese goes under her rebounding prop. Yeah. Eight consecutive double-doubles for Angel Reese, including a 25-point, 16-board performance in Sunday's one-point victory over Indiana. Speaking of the fever, they're on the road tonight in the Northwest. It's the final game of four. They're an eight-and-a-half-point underdog against the Seattle Storm. Is the line justified in favor of Seattle? It's justified, but I, I got a feeling here that they're good that the Fever are going to cover the spread. I think they're going to be in this game. They're playing better. Also, if you want a double-double, not Angel Reese, Aaliyah Boston. 
been a double-double machine the last five or six games. Indiana has won five of its previous seven games after only two wins in its first 11. That was a fun hour. We appreciate you here on the early line. We will see JY and Kevin Walsh later for our second round NBA draft Honey. special coverage later this afternoon. Hour three on the early line next.